Well, first off, I want to just thank everybody for coming. Uh, we're really, really excited to show you what we've been working on. Um, for three and a half years, this project started as a small little flash application and has evolved and evolved and evolved into what I think is something that could make a really profound impact on education. And I wouldn't say that if I re didn't really believe that it could, it could make a difference. Um, the two people who have worked on this are myself and my co-developer, Chris Small. Uh, <laughs> Chris is here with his lovely wife, Emmeline, and it, this has been a labor of love, sweat, and tears for both of us for the past three and a half years. So let's just, for the next 30 minutes, I just want to show you what the website can do. And um, you have to understand, it is in beta, which means that although it's working right now, we're still going to be changing it, fixing some bugs, and adding more ideas to it. And in about two months, I'm really going to be ready to really launch it. But for now, it is working and it is in beta. But my goal for this presentation is for you to see the potential and the potential of what this can do and the ideas behind it. So I'll start off with a question. And that is, what website do you go to when you want to learn how to do something? Google. Google. Probably Google, right? You're going to Google and just roll the dice and see what comes out of Google. Maybe you go to YouTube and hopefully there's a video about it on YouTube. Or uh, you go to Wikipedia, maybe, and look for some resources on Wikipedia or find a page. But if you think about it, there's not really a website you can go to where you can see educational content in a really structured, step-by-step -step way that you can, and, and an inter a website where that content is interactive. Because the problem is, when you watch a video, you know, three days later, you probably only retain about 15% of that video because you didn't interact with it, you just passively watched it. So what if I were to tell you that there is a website out there that can do that stuff, and we call it Blickle. So when you go to Blickle.com, which is www.blickel.com, you're going to be greeted by our homepage. And so what I'm going to do for you is just create a new account. So we're going to call this account presentation tech start. And whenever you create your account, um, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to be taken, you know, let me do one, uh, um, let me do this email for now. I can't use the same email as my other account. <laughs> when you're taken to the website, the first thing that you're going to be taken to is a lesson on how to use the website. So what you're looking at right now is what the lesson page looks like for the website. Now, I've been a high school teacher for two years. I currently teach at the Pueblo Community College Fremont campus, and I've also been taught GED courses. And over the years, I've used about a dozen different learning systems, and they're all difficult to use, both for the teacher, for the student, for the administrator. This is our interface. When you're completing a lesson, this is what you're going to be greeted with. You can see that, unlike others, the entire lesson loads in the beginning. So now we have totally free navigation without any further server pings or requirements. Um, you can click on these. You'll notice that as I'm completing these parts, my progress is increasing and the icons are changing color to indicate that I've read that text and that I have moved on. In order to complete the lesson, you have to um, in order to complete the lesson, you have to complete each one of these parts over here. Inside of the lesson, you can link it to your audio file. So naturally, we wanted to do a positive audio file. Thank you, thank you. We now have sound. We now have sound. So we can link up audio as part of this. But in addition to linking up audio, we can also link up videos. And so this is a performance I gave of the piece La Razignol. And it's just linked from YouTube. The point is that we can make this a multimedia presentation. It's audio, it's images, it's text. But I've left out the most important part. How do you make it interactive? Every single part of this can be interactive. So the first question you're asked to answer is this one right here. This here we have a photo of Oscar and Felix, our two new kitties. And uh, so the question is over here, what is this an image of? Is it kittens, a car, or a tree? What do you think? <laughs> Let's assume that it's kittens. 
And you can see that we've completed every part of the lesson and we're ready to move on to the next part. So you get kind of the idea of the feel of it. I hope it's a lot more interactive and engaging than if you've ever used a learning system before. Let's move on to the next lesson and look at some of the different types of questions and different learning opportunities that could be done with this. So there's several different types of questions. So you'll notice that this one is, what's the day after Wednesday? So you can see we can make a multiple choice question or at least take one. Let's go ahead and get this incorrect and say that the day after um, Wednesday is Saturday. You'll notice that it lets us know that that answer choice is incorrect. By the way, those little animations are customizable. So if you're in a college environment or an elementary environment, you can make them customizable to whatever your audience is. You'll notice over here that this icon has turned red, indicating that I do not have that part correct. Um, here's an image multiple choice question. Which of these is an image of a rope? These choices over here automatically scramble, so uh, it's not always in the same <coughs> position. We'll say that the answer is image B. Here's a fill in the blank question. Roses are red, violets are? Blue. Hopefully it's blue. Let's see if that's the correct answer. Indeed it is. <laughs> we can also do math type questions. So here, I'm not gonna show this to you today, but we're able to code it so that when you're taking a math question, the numbers change for each student. And so although the math question is very similar, it's probably a number between one and 10 plus a number between one and 10, no two students get the exact same question, which reduces the chances for copying. So we'll go ahead and say that the answer is eight. One of the things I want to show you, though, is the true potential of this across any subject matter. So this is a picture of Chris's dog, Olivia. <laughs> and so here's an example of what a uh, foreign language lesson could look like. The question is asking, before we move on, what is the Spanish word for dog? Does anybody know before we? So check out, this is a video I made yesterday. Welcome to Learning Spanish with Gregory. The Spanish word for dog is el perro. You can see the spelling right over here. Again, the Spanish word for dog is el perro. So I hope you see, like, this is a lot more than just, you know, strictly academic potential. It's if you just want to learn a single word, like when you learn what's the Spanish word for perro, rather than just Googling it and getting the answer, you're going to get linked into a lesson on Blickel that's not just going to tell you the answer and let you interact to check for understanding. So we'll go ahead and get it correct. But it'll be connected to a lesson before it and a lesson after it in a unit that gives you the opportunity to learn more things and check your understanding to make sure that you get it correct. If I take a step backwards to the unit page, you're gonna see that it's tracked my progress in these units. In addition, they will, we will be linked up to social media so that you can share a unit or a lesson with your, with your friends and they'll be taken to that lesson. Let's take a step back and see how content is organized on the site. The way we organize it is like this. You have programs. Inside of those programs, you have courses. Inside of those courses, you have units. And inside of those units, you have lessons. It's heavily influenced by my teaching experience. By the way, program and courses don't necessarily have to go together. So now that we've kind of got an idea of what a lesson structure looks like, where do we go from here? And the answer is our content, every user will first get linked to a program that teaches them how to use the site, but that's not all we wanna do. So let's explore more content and see what else is available on the site. So you can see that what we've got here is Blickle Science and Blickle Life Skills. So those two sound interesting. So let's go ahead and enroll in both of those. And as soon as I do, I'm now in that content and I can take that content. You can see that we also have some Blender lessons here that the interns made on how to use the 3D printing software. So we'll, we'll look at those another time. But for now, I want to show you two other applications of this. Let's imagine we're in middle school science. We all know that teaching math and science is challenging, and every teacher is doing it different than every other teacher. And maybe we can relieve the stress on teachers. Let's go ahead. You can see that I've made a unit inside middle school science called middle school astronomy. And um, the lesson we made was yesterday was the inner planets of the solar system. So let's go ahead and see what this lesson looks like. So imagine you're a middle schooler just trying to learn about the planets of the solar system. 
This is a graphic that the amazing Chris Mall made. Our joke is that he makes everything you can see and I make everything you can't see. So <laughs> there's no way I could make that image. Anyway, I guess I'll just have to take the blickle when you make it. <laughs> so we have um, the planets of the solar system here. At the center of the solar system, we have the sun. Then we have Mercury. Then, of course, Venus. Then this place, you are here. And then we have Mars. And so each one of these lessons you notice is designed to just be a five minute little experience. Just a one bite sized piece where you gain some knowledge and then you're immediately tested on it. So which planet is closest to the sun based on what we just learned? The answer is Mercury. And then question two, which of these demonstrates the correct way of the order of the planets? And so it would be Mercury, then Venus, then Earth, then Mars. What this does is it shortens the learning from instead of watching a 10 or 30 minute video or instead of doing an extremely long essay, and I'm not saying those things aren't important and indeed they can be put into the system, but it makes it, each part of it, each phase of it more interactive and it enables you to interact with it. Let's go ahead and look at the other application. If I come back to my profile, you see that because I've enrolled in that program, it's now appearing in my profile of stuff that I'm interested in. So let's see what this life skill is lesson that we made. And it's something, I made a unit called Every, Skills Everybody Should Know. And of course, what did I put in here? Driving skills, right? <laughs> we all need to get better at that. So let's take a look and see what we have in here. And one area that I know we all struggle with is parallel parking. Um, so anybody here sometimes not get it the first try when you're parallel parking? <laughs> but I noticed some of the interns are raising their hands. Well, let's see what this lesson looks like. What this lesson is an example of is an animation that Chris made yesterday. And so you'll notice down here we have the four tires and a steering wheel. So here's this video that Chris made yesterday. It starts off by showing you where you go, showing you how you turn the steering wheel, so that you can get it perfectly. And you'll notice, you'll notice that in each, one of these, in each one of these video parts, I explain each step one at a time. So this video could even be broken down into the individual steps of what that experience is. So what you do is you wanna pull forward to the car in front, you turn the wheel, and then as soon as your front wheels are lined up with the back wheels of the car in front, is when you want to turn the wheel in the other direction so that you can go straight in. So, um, so again, we, we, it, the video is short enough that we just copy pasted the video on each step. But even with something like parallel parking, you can check for understanding. And the most important part of parallel parking is knowing when to turn the steering wheel in the other direction. And you do that when your front wheels have lined up with the back wheels of the car in front. So, it's all pretty exciting. It's all pretty snazzy. Um, what I'd like to do now is show you what it looks like. So here's what your dashboard looks like. Um, so we have buttons that can take you back to the most recent lesson you are working on. In the future, we're going to be linking up tests and homework, which I'll talk about in a second. You'll have your profile and news feed, and of course, internal messaging. But let's see how you can track your progress. So if I click this progress, you'll notice that here's the parallel parking lesson that I just did. You'll notice that it's green all the way across because I got a 100% on that lesson. Let's go back to the Blickle course that I did, because you can see all of my content is up here. And you'll notice that I had 100% on the first part, but only 83% on that second part, right? Because I missed that one question. I didn't know what day was after Wednesday, I think. So let's fix that. I, or your teacher, can click on any one of these parts and it will track every single attempt you make on it, whether you got it right or wrong and what answer you put. So a teacher can see, hmm, they're missing this and here's the answers that they're putting. We can then go back to that lesson, notice that it remembers me, notice that it remembered which part I had incorrect so that I can come back and submit the correct answer. Now, when I go back to that course progress page, it will remember that, um, it will notice that I now have 100% on that lesson. And if I click on that part again, you see that I've gotten it correct 50% of the time. I missed it the first time and I got it correct the second time. So that's all pretty interesting, but what's the problem with it? And this is a problem that added a year to the project. The problem is you're limited by what's on the site. 
You can only take what's on there. What if there was a way we could make our own content? Guess what? There is. Let me show you. I'm going to log in on a different account. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to log into my personal Blickle account, and I'm going to, oops, I need to go to Blickle. I'm going to go ahead and log into my account. And underneath my account is the science lesson that I made. You'll remember I made that science lesson with the middle school science. So what I want to do is add some content because they're not going to pass their standard if that's the only lesson we have on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the content creation center. You can see that I can create or edit a program, a course, a unit, or a lesson. So let's see how long it takes to make something like this. I'm going to click on create lesson and I'm going to be attaching this lesson to the middle school astronomy unit because that's what I want this to be under. We need to do a lesson name, so let's call this lesson the outer planets of the solar system. And you'll notice that I've got a grid here of a bunch of different things. Each one of these blocks corresponds to one screen of the lesson page. So for example, maybe we want to remind them with an overview of all of the planets. Sorry, it's a little hard to see the mouse. So over here, let's just do the solar system. Let's call this part the solar system, and we'll say these are the planets of the solar system. Okay, hopefully I spelled all of that correctly. Can't do much without an image, so let's grab an image real fast. I have some images here that Chris made yesterday on the desktop. And here I have an image of the solar system that he made. So all I have to do is just open it. I can give it a name and give it some alternate text in case their browser does not support the image. And just like you do on Facebook, you just upload the image. And now that image is now attached to that lesson part. Let's go down to the next one and do a lesson part on Jupiter. We'll say this planet is um, the next planet since they just learned about Mars. The next planet is Jupiter, or actually let's say this is the title of it, so let's just call it Jupiter. And let's say the largest planet is Jupiter. And let's go find our image of Jupiter. Now, when I grab it, you'll notice, again, Chris made this yesterday. Does any do a great job? Yeah. <laughs> But you know, I'd like to do something to this image. It's not, you know, I understand that this is Jupiter and that's wonderful, but I'd like to really point out the big red spot because that's kind of an important part of Jupiter. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a text box to this. So let's uh, add a white text box. And let's point out the big red spot. And well, you'll notice that in addition to just giving you the tools, we're going to want to give you additional tools so that you can truly <coughs> feel like you are making your own content. So we'll attach that right there. We'll point out the big red spot. We'll attach that image, that text box. By the way, you can add as many text boxes as you want and uh, move them all independently. And then we'll go ahead, now that that's there, we'll go ahead and upload that image. I'm gonna do one more lesson part because you get the idea. Let's add Saturn and say this is Saturn. And we'll add the image of Saturn, but I don't know if you've heard of the Cassini mission, which um, recently burned up in Saturn after, doing its, after completing its mission. So I would like to, in addition to showing them a picture of Saturn, I would like to show them a video of that Cassini mission. And I know of one that's on YouTube. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead first off and upload this image. But I'd also like to connect a video to this. So I'm gonna hop over to YouTube and I know there's a video that NASA put out of the Cassini mission, so let's find it. Here's the one I want, this one right here. I want my students to see this. So all I've got to do is just copy the link. Oops. All I have to do is copy the link. We're going to connect a video to the Saturn part. I just throw the link up there and it's connected to my lesson. Wow. By the way, maybe there's some filler that I want to skip or an ad. So I'd actually, the part I'd like to them to see is, let's go ahead and start this video at 30 seconds. 
rather than starting it at the beginning. So, so you have timestamps where you can start the video wherever you want. You can even make it autoplay if the browser will let you. So we'll connect that as well. So we just did that. Let's finish with, a, let's finish with two questions. So I'm going to call this question one, and I'm going to call this question two. So the first question, you notice I can flip it from an information to a question. We'll say the question is, what is the largest planet? Sorry, I'm not familiar with this keyboard, as you can tell. I'll just, I guess we can always edit the lesson later. So what is the largest planet? We'll put the answer as Jupiter down here. By the way, you can add correct and incorrect feedback to every question. So if somebody gets it correct, you can have a little thing that pops up that says good job, or if it's incorrect, you can give them a hint so that they can get it correct the next time. So we've just added that question. Now let's add a multiple choice question. We'll say which planet has rings? Let's make it a multiple choice. By the way, if you're a particularly cruel teacher, you can add up to 10 incorrect <laughs> choices. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll say Saturn, Mars, um, Earth, and we'll say, can I get a lifeline <laughs> as the choices. So we review our lesson. By the way, let's say you have to understand how difficult it is for this to work. If even one part of this is empty or wrong, it can cause the whole lesson to fail. So let's imagine that I accidentally left off question two, and let's say I accidentally left one of my choices blank when I'm making this lesson. I try to create the lesson, and it doesn't let me. It says you have two little errors with this lesson. One of the lesson parts is missing, and you're missing an incorrect choice. In addition to that, it's turned the cells red of the ones that I have some incorrect values on. So you get a chance to fix very quickly the parts that you made a mistake on. So let's do that. Let's add Mars again. And you just check it one more time. It won't let you submit it if there's a bug. And we're attaching it to middle school astronomy. I click Create Lesson. The lesson is created, ready for the next one. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to my student account. So that was me being on the teacher side. Let's go back to the student account. So I'm in a different account now that was not connected to that teacher account. If I go back to my Blickle, back to Blickle Science, back to Middle School Science, back to Astronomy, you'll notice we have a second lesson that just popped up. That lesson will pop up for every student who is enrolled in that program. Let's take a look at it. Here was the first image we uploaded. These are the planets of the solar system. If I move next, there's Jupiter pointing out the big red spot. And as you can see, it's a little bit off, so as a teacher, I can go back, quickly edit it, and resave it so that the text field is there. Here was a thing of Saturn, including my video that starts at the time set that I wanted it to start at. Finally, here are our two questions. Which is the largest planet? We'll put in Jupiter. That's the correct answer. And finally, we'll say, which planet has rings? Saturn, Earth, can I get a lifeline on Mars? And we'll put Saturn. What happens if you get, can I get a lifeline? Well, because I put that in as the incorrect choice, it will say that uh, incorrect. Please try again. But maybe <laughs> now you can put in some incorrect feedback, saying, remember, the planet that has rings is right after Jupiter. Let, by the way, if we go back to our course progress page, this is the thing. Teachers don't want to deal, and you all, don't want to deal with the minutia and the machinery in the background. You just want to make your content. In addition to the lesson automatically being created for all of those users, my Outer Planets lesson has been automatically entered into the gradebook for that lesson and is interactive with all of the tools that we've put onto it, including its social media shareability. My hope is, but what I'm hoping you're thinking right now is, I could use it for this. <laughs> you know, we've got employers here. I could use it for 
potential employee training where I don't want to hire somebody unless you know, like for Pizza Madness, maybe you want them to know how to use the, you know, how to throw the pizza or you want them to know like how to answer basic customer service questions before you, as part of their resume. Or maybe you're a university who's wanting to test students um, who are coming in to see where they're standing. The big dream is, um, and I, I, I want to use this with homeschoolers, if there's a pastor at a church who wants to do a little mini lesson relating to the lesson of that, that week's sermon and have the, the people take it and they can see, did I, did I really get my message across or did I not get my message across? This, I'm hoping, has applications across all walks of life. Uh, um, training for city employees and making sure you do your HR requirements, et cetera, et cetera. We believe, and let me tell you a few of the features that are coming. The idea is you start about making your contents, you start about making your lessons, then you might want to make a pretest. You can drag and drop, we'll, you will be able to drag and drop the questions from your lesson to your pretest. When a student takes that pretest, just like you see right here, those results will get mapped to those questions on the lessons so that the student knows, I'm good at math, I'm good at math, I'm good at math, oops, here's where I need to start. Not just am I good or bad at fractions, but we have 50 lessons just on fractions. Here's exactly where you need to start on fractions. Our dream is the same place that you go to get your workforce training is the same place that your student's teacher goes to do their lessons so that you and the teacher can see how they're doing in real time together is the same place that when they go from high school to college, it's in the same umbrella so that what they've learned in high school maps straight to what the college has and so that the college knows where they need to start. That's the dream, and um, we were gonna be adding even more to it, but the best part is, is if you go on right now and create an account, you can make, just like I did, a lesson about whatever you wanted. And I hope that you realize that the amount of time it takes to make this stuff is almost the same amount of time it takes to complete this stuff. <laughs> and so I close with this. My only question for you is, what are you gonna make? Thank you, everybody. Yay.